Hi, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is part three of the three-part series that I'm filming about how to edit an essay. And today's video is about expression. Today's video will talk about spotting typos, the passive voice, numerical vagueness, contractions, spotting and removing tautologies, commas, and the semicolon, exclamation marks and ellipses, and when and how to use quotations. When it comes to spotting typos, probably the best method I found is to print out the document and then go through the document word by word. I touched on this in part two of this series, but I wanted to add a point. When I was an undergraduate, there was a common technique going around that if you read your work backwards, that would help you to find your typos. I never really found that method very effective personally. You might have a different experience, but for me, I found it just didn't quite work the way I'd hoped it would. And I found I still missed a few errors. Now I understand the intent here. The intent, I think, is to give you a new perspective on your work. Well, you can achieve that simply by putting your work down and coming back to it at a later stage, maybe a day or two or three or even a week if you can spare the time, so that you're not as familiar with it when you go through and do your typo editing. Now, I realize not everybody has that kind of time, but just one day can be enough to give you a new perspective and go through your document word by word with a biro, highlighting each word as you look at it and checking to make sure each word is spelt correctly and each word is the correct use of that word. The passive voice numerical vagueness and contractions. I want to talk about all these together because you can actually do all of these at the same time as you're going through in one sweep of your essay. You might have your spell checker report to you that your writing is in the passive voice. So what does this mean? Well, it means that your statement is a weak statement. And what do we mean by a weak statement? It's a weak statement because it doesn't state who is doing the talking. Particularly when you're writing in academia, it's very important that you state who you're reporting as the author or the contributor of information in your work. And in this case, it's best if you put the character of the sentence at the beginning of the sentence. So, for example, if it was a paper written by Rogers et al., you could state Rogers et al. and the year noted and then write what it was that they noted. So an example here might be a theory was proposed by Rogers et al. And that's a passive voice sentence because the character is at the end of the sentence. You could rephrase that and simply say Rogers et al. proposed and then insert the theory that they proposed. That's a much stronger sentence. Numerical vagueness is very similar. You may state, many people say, without actually stating who those people are. Also, go through your essay and look for unnecessary words. These often come in the form of inflections, like very, or a lot, or many. They're simply not needed. Words like very large can be replaced with single words like gigantic, or massive, very small, tiny. An example might be, Roger's theory is very hard. Instead, you could simply write, Roger's theory is difficult. That's a much stronger sentence. It's much more succinct, and it's more to the point. Another example, a lot of research has indicated. Instead, much research has indicated, and then state the research. Other common mistakes I see are the insertion of there are or there is. These kinds of extra words are not necessary. For example, there are many theories that Rogers has authored. Instead, Rogers is the author of many theories. Again, more succinct and more to the point. Contractions are words like don't, can't, and isn't. These words need to be written out in full. In spoken language, we might say these words in their abbreviated form. But in academic writing, we need to write them out. So can't is cannot. Don't is do not. Similarly, hasn't, haven't, wouldn't, couldn't, shouldn't, and won't. Has not, have not, would not, could not, should not, will not. All of these contractions need to be written out in full. Removing tautologies. 
A tautology is a stylistic error involving redundant words. In this case, using two words that mean the same thing. For example, big giant. Referring simply to a giant would have been sufficient. Students often use tautologies when they're trying to make their writing more impactful. It's simply not necessary. And in fact, has the opposite effect. Commas and semicolon. People who are not sure about where to put commas seem to fall into two groups. They either use far too many or far too few. A comma goes where you take a breath. So if you're unsure, a good way is to print out your work and read through it at a natural pace. Where do you stop to take a breath? Try putting a comma there and rereading it and pausing. Does it make sense? Does it flow? If a comma interrupts the flow of a thought process that you're having in a sentence, you don't need to have one there. I often see students make mistakes with things like semicolons. Some students just don't quite know how to use them. Use a semicolon to link two independent clauses that are related in thought, but would work better as separate sentences. For example, participant reaction times indicate faster responses to familiar stimuli compared to non-familiar stimuli, indicating attention was drawn toward familiarity. In academic writing, there really is no need to have any exclamation points or ellipses. The intent of exclamation points are to add inflection to a word. In academic writing, it looks like you're simply overstating something. And when you overstate something in academic writing, it actually has the opposite effect. Only use them in exceptional circumstances when you genuinely want to convey a state of surprise or anger. Ellipses should also be avoided unless you're indicating the truncation of a quote from another author. For example, if you're stating the words of another author, but you are removing some portion of it, then ellipses are useful. In all other circumstances, ellipses should not be in your written work. When to use quotations. In academic writing, quotations are sometimes used. The expectations for students is that you will demonstrate that you understand what the other writer is communicating. And you do that through paraphrasing. In student work, when we see lots of quotations, it makes the work come across as the student is either lazy or the student has simply not done enough research. Remember, we would like to see your thoughts, your understanding of a topic, which is why we've given you that topic. In academic writing, it's simply best to avoid quotations altogether. That's it for this video. I really hope you found some value in it. And if you did, click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos on how to enhance your academic work, click the subscribe button here. Or you could check out one of my other videos here. If there are any other topics that you'd like me to talk about or any advice you would like, leave a comment in the, in the comment section down below. Until next time, bye for now.